looked good. You looked good. I mean, uh, you still want to go in the right direction. Um, as for what he did tonight, what could you say about what we're going to see in his next start, pitch wise? Pitch count wise? Yeah, pitch well, count. Well, obviously, I think mean, we'll increase it. You know, the pitch count, you know, higher will approach, uh, you know, uh, I think he finished tonight with, you know, close to somewhere about 85 range. So, um, we really can't to jump him up to 100, you know, as much outing, but, uh, you know, he still, I think, still needs, he's going to need more time, you know, I think, uh, as he continues to build strength and, and endurance and things of that nature. So, you know, he's going to have at least a few more to go um, before we start considering anything. What are some of the positive uh, things that you saw from him tonight? You know, mechanically is good, and, um, he's healthy, and, He's getting his work in, but uh, but you know he's not there yet. But uh, he certainly um, he's on the right track. Brian, with uh, the injury to Pineda, does uh, Andy's uh, progress become even more uh, like uh, demanding and become more uh, you know uh, what you need? You know, I mean, I don't. I, nothing really changes for Andy. You know, regardless of you know uh, what's taking place at the major league level. I mean, Andy's got to, you know, uh, he's got to go through the right motions, which is there's a little unknown there, given the fact that his age, being a full year off, you know, so you know he'll be ready when he's ready, um, and so despite what's happening above, and you know, there's not going to be any urgency other than hey, when he feels right, when he looks right, when his endurance is right, you know, he's got you know his pitch count where it needs to be, and all his pitches working, you know, consistently, then you know, then. Uh, then, you know, then obviously I think we're under consideration at that point to go ahead and, and uh, try to slot him at the major league level, uh, but that's certainly going to be down the line. Will he get another start here, do you think, or will he be up? Triple you know, my sure. next step, we'll, we'll see how he feels. Like, every after each start, we basically take a step back, and that's why Ed, I know I think there's a lot of anticipation of whether the previous start was going to be here. We kind of wait, look at the weather, um, see how he's feeling. And then slot him. So uh, right now, uh, you know, we'll see how he feels tomorrow from this, uh, and then we'll start kind of looking at the weather and looking at the schedules and see where and what would make the most sense. So it'll we'll take a you know a few days to figure that out. You know, he'll do his bullpen session and all that stuff. So Which today was a great night. It was a good, good, uh, uh, important next step. And you know, so again, we'll take a couple of the, the days to figure out what's next and when and how he feels. And, get some more information and then slot him after that. Would you be less inclined to send him on the road, whether it's with this team or because Triple A's on the road all year anyway? I mean, is that not your preference? Well, I think it depends on, you know, first and foremost, we love to take care of our affiliates. We like to pitch off of our home mound, so in theory, that's that's always the way we want to go. Competition's important as well, so as you progress, you like to progress up the ladder with, you know, similar competition. Uh, as well as taking care of your affiliates and your fans that support those affiliates in, in the home mounds and the people you know and uh, the stadiums you're comfortable with. But uh, but again, I got to take a step back and look at A, weather, B, schedules, C, competition, uh, and first and foremost, how Andy's feeling. So, you know, we'll look at that. Brian, could you talk about the, uh, the tough news of the day with Pineda and the specifics to the injury and, and prognosis and so forth? Yeah, today... Uh, you know, today was obviously very difficult, uh, and it's, you know, it's a, uh, I got the phone call from Dr. Maud. He just said, I don't have good news. He prefaced it right away. He said, I don't have good news to talk about, Brian. And, but you have to deal with it. You know, it's, uh, it's something that, unfortunately, is part of our sport. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're, hey, listen, if you can, if you can, you know, uh, you know pick your assets and, and say, hey, these guys are going to stay as is and, you know, uh, that would be obviously the best way to go, but that's unfortunately that's why you have to have depth. You have to build, you know, uh, a, a group and to pull from. And uh, unfortunately, we're gonna have to pull some other name or pull some other names other than Michael Pineda for the 2012 season. That certainly wasn't my intention. You know, when we acquired him, it certainly wasn't Michael's, uh, you know, intention to fulfill a lot of dreams. And um, so we're gonna have to wait on that, all of those things. The most important thing now is taking care of Michael, making sure he gets the best medical care. Um, try to look at the bright side of these things. It's not good to see anything bright out of this right now. So you know, but the you know there is a 
a success rate. We'll focus on that aspect of it. We'll make sure he's you know gets the best medical attention. He's in the best medical hands, and and we'll try to rehab him to the best of our abilities with the doctors involved. And and hopefully everything will go perfect. And you know, in a date in the future, we'll have the player that we hoped we were getting. But we just have to take the time out and let the uh, you know uh, the healing process, the surgical process, and you know and put it in God's hands to see if that day can come for us down the line. Torn labrum. Labrum. Yeah, he has a labrum tear uh, in the front of the shoulder, which is an unusual spot for labrum tears. Most of them are slap labrums on the back end of the shoulder. This is in the front end. Rotator's good. Um, yeah, rotator uh, is healthy. and uh, So it's an arthroscopic surgery, so they do not have to open him up. Uh, um, so that's, you know, could be worse if you have to open up. You don't want anybody to have shoulder surgery. If you're going to pick surgeries for pitchers, you prefer the elbow. Those are easier. Uh, if you have to have a shoulder surgery, you'd rather it be the labrum than the rotator cuff. You'd rather it not be any of it in the shoulder. But but if you if you're gonna have to go in the shoulder, you know, the lighter loads the labrum, but that's not a light load either. But, Brian, uh, I'm sorry, Brian, were you did you come here tonight open to the idea of maybe Andy coming joining the Yankees next week? I mean, if he had no. thrown five shutout innings, ten strikeouts, would it have been a discussion even? Not at all. He's not right. I mean, he's he's coming off. He's as he said, you know, he was minimum going to go at least two starts after this outing regardless. Um, he's still building arm strength. He's 40 years old. You know, spending a year out uh, pitching extended spring and what was it, two Florida State League games off the top of my head. And then one in double A, that's not going to jump you right into the big leagues. That's, that's a dangerous proposition to play. So I mean, I, I'm not necessarily worried anything about Andy's arm. More worried about his lower half and his legs and how he recovers and building that endurance and and letting his body speak for him as he progresses the the combination ladder of pitch count and and weather like you know he was pitching obviously in great weather down in Florida you know it's cooler up here that's not a bad thing it's not a bad thing to see how his body reacts to that it's not a bad thing to see how his body's going to react to uh, a pitch count in the 85 level it's not and just like it's going to be a good thing to either get to that level or exceed that level at least one or two more times at the very minimum probably three you know uh, he, you know we got to be play it safe and uh, make sure that when he when and if he's ready that it's it's not going to be something it's going to be something he can maintain and stay consistent and healthy uh, so he's you know in the position to help um, and he knows that he's being really smart too I just talked to him about it and uh, kind of reinforcing everything we've always already talked about but but no, he went in here knowing, as, as did we, that this is not something that, that he'd be pulled out of here. I mean, even if I lost every starter in our rotation in New York right now, um, he wouldn't be coming to New York to replace anybody after this outing. You know, that's just not, it's, it's too early in the process for him. So. Regardless of whether he gives up hits, runs, whatever, in these minor league starts, is there any way to feel like he's ready to face major league hitting or assess that until you see him face major league hitting? Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I think you can see that. Personally, I, I, you know, I, you know Andy well enough. I know Andy needs more time. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm ecstatic about how he pitched. Personally, I mean, I think he did really well. I think he looks good. I think he's, you know, I, I feel like he would be in, you know, uh, the second or third, maybe second, third outing of a spring training game right now, which is he's got more to go, but he looks good. That's you know that's so I kind of feel like we're at the quarter point of a spring training, halfway point of a spring training, you know, which means it could be two, three more starts, whatever. If you're building up to five, you know, some guys need a little longer. You know, wish spring training lasts a little longer. Some guys, you know, don't need as long as spring training. I think it, I feel like he's somewhere, you know, out of the quarter point to the halfway point of a spring training right now. And it doesn't it doesn't change your timetable, but does does it up the the urgency a little bit that he's able to? contribute this year now that uh, with all things considered no I mean I think I think again when you're dealing with whether it's players coming back from an injury or players you know that you're preparing their schedule is paramount not whatever is happening with the big club so it's you know again we have to we have to get Andy ready and uh, you know so he can help us rather than we need you to help us before you're ready you know I got to put him. In, we have to put him in a position to help us. I believe he's going to. I really do. I just, I think that we can, we can 
disrupt that process of the ultimate goal of him helping us if we pull him too quick. In terms of his schedule, will the period that he testified, um, is, is that going to uh, uh, um, change when you call him up at all or affect when you call him up? Since I have no knowledge, it's, I can't really speak to it. You know, so it's one of those things where, you know, hey, if, if that's an issue, you adjust on the run, and you know, if it's not an issue, you just keep going as scheduled. Just, so the most important thing right now is getting his work in, making sure he maintains health, and then if there's anything along the way that you know you have to alter, you alter. You know, so, Brian, with regards to Pineda, from your experience or from your knowledge, um, what are success cases that, in terms of guys who come back, that you can point to, who come back well? I mean, I, I'm not a uh, an expert on this, but clearly when when the specific injuries get tagged, you you talk about you know. When I heard this, I was obviously devastated, and clearly still am. But but uh, I was uh, I was a little surprised to hear how how uh, you know pitchers actually do come back from this, uh, and at the level that they do, and at the success rate that they do. And so uh, we're cautiously optimistic, despite what he has. At, at least this is something that is correctable by surgery, and has you know. Uh, very, very high success rate, and that that was something that was learned by me today. You know, because if you ask me in March, you know, I think I told everybody when the MRI came back clean in March, they just said, you know, I spent the night. They said, well, you felt like it. I said, well, I went to bed. You know, I had visions of labrums and rotator cuffs dancing in my head. You know, and, and that's not what you want to think about. Well, now, you know, we're we're at the end of April, and we're dealing with a significant labrum tear. So now you. You get more information, and with two real high-end doctors, and Chris Ahmad and David Alchek, and and when they both tell you that, you know, hey, guys come back from this, and most guys come back from this, and most guys come back from from this at the same level, and this this stuff is repairable with surgery. Um, it's not like the rotator cuff, and they start talking like that, you know. You listen, you start to grab grab on to hope and silver linings anywhere you can get when you're in this circumstance. Guys, I'll take a couple more if there are any. Brian, um, last season, the second half of last season, Pineda did suffer a drop off in velocity. His numbers were just were not there. Was there anything about that that concerned you at the time of the trade? You know, it's, a, it's a good question because there's a myth about that. The, uh, the whole second half, his first half and second half statistical numbers were almost identical, if not an improvement on the second half. ERA can be uh, misleading, but strikeouts per nine and walks per nine, I'm almost positive were maybe even increased and in, improved in the second half. Velocity was the same in the second half outside of his last start. Mm. So the uh, fan, you know, I, we talked about this in spring training, but you know, there gets to be a momentum of you know uh, misinformation, and so his, his. So I'm glad you asked that because the second half, his last start, where I think it was maybe a three week or, or somewhere around their time frame between starts because they were limiting his innings. So his last start of the season was. The significant drop off in velocity, where he was at topping out, I think at 91, that was noted. We recognized that, but that was, uh, in my, in our mind, understandable given the fact that he was down for three weeks between starts. Um, you know, so again, fast forward, we had full access to all medicals. We had a full physical on the guy that included X-rays and MRIs of both the elbows and the shoulder. He never had any complaints in his career with the Mariners with the shoulder. Never had any tests on the shoulder as confirmed with the medical information we received, as well as the player himself saying he never had any issues, never had any tests, uh, never had any complaints. Um, the only thing I can tell you is, obviously, as you all know, because you lived through it, that we're, you know, that we're covering some spring training from the games of spring training through the end of March, you know, the velocity wasn't anything, wasn't what it had been, you know, in years prior. Uh, but no pain, no complaints. You know, up until the last start of the spring, and we asked him the entire spring, and I think you probably, I think you know, most of the media corps asked the same questions that we were asking. We asked him, maybe we had the opportunity to ask more detail, like, hey, you got to be honest with us. Wasn't until that last start where there was any complaint or a problem, and then, um, and then uh, the last in his rehab game, uh, we believe that this injury you know, became significant because. Yeah. Now, if we, the doctor told me, if we did an MRI today, this would show. It's a significant tear that previous MRIs had nothing on. But if you did a regular MRI, 
now it would show. So in that last game, I believe the last pitch is when he felt something and walked off after the first inning. That's where an episode occurred. Uh, that's the belief.